Good evening, everyone, and welcome. My name is Penny Wright, and on behalf of all of us at the Rogers Memorial Library, I'd like to thank you for being here at this oral history evening. Before we get started introducing our guests tonight, I'd like to thank a few people. Uh, we'd like to thank Richard Behrens of the Southampton Historical Museum, who's here with us tonight for co-sponsoring this event with us and giving us wonderful photographs to use. Uh, his wife, Roseanne, who baked some great cookies in the shapes of stars for later. Um, we'd like to thank uh, Eric Woodward, local architect and husband of Hillary Woodward, who made wonderful copies of some of the old photos for us tonight. We hope you'll take a few minutes to browse later. Um, some of our guests lent photos, and we thank them as well. And uh, finally, I'd like to thank Hillary Herrick Woodward, who has recently joined our program staff and who uh, helped in many ways putting this evening together. Um, so we're very thankful to her as well. I would like to introduce you all to tonight's guests, who are four women who grew up in Southampton and, believe it or not, have some memories of the years of the Depression. Uh, to my left is Constance Herrick, who was born Constance Jessup. No. I mean, oh, sorry. Oh, my goodness. Constance Edwards. I'm sorry. We do have a Jessup, but it's not Mrs. Herrick. Okay, sorry. Uh, Constance Edwards. She grew up in Southampton, and she, I think, is the only one of the four who attended the old Windmill Lane School. Uh, some of you are familiar with that school, and there's a photograph of it, you know, behind me, through the sixth grade, I believe. Um, after high school, she attended Pratt Art Institute and worked for, uh, worked as a commercial artist in New York before her marriage to Samuel Herrick. The two of them had four children, and she is now the grandmother of eight and a great-grandmother of three. Please welcome Constance Herrick. <laughs> to her left, <laughs> we're delighted to have Roxanne Dozier, who was born Roxanne Wingfield, a name that some of you will recognize. Uh, I have to say that she is the, the baby of the group. She was actually born at home. Her grandmother was a midwife, and she attended Southampton schools. In 1969, she started her job working for the Southampton public school system, and she remained there for 23 years. So there are a lot of people who remember Mrs. Dozier over the years. Uh, she has three grown children, seven grandchildren, Please welcome Roseanne, Roxanne Dozier. <laughs> Next to Roxanne is Florette Gios, born at the Southampton Hospital when it was just being built. <laughs> Luckily, I think it had been built. <laughs> <laughs> and she also attended the local schools and then went on to become Southampton's premier gardener and gardening uh, mentor to so many people in this, in this town for a very long time. Uh, in fact, this summer, Florette will be our guest at a two-part series about gardening. We hope you'll come to that. We will visit her garden. Um, Florette is a mother of one and a grandmother of three, and we are very grateful to you for being here. Please welcome Florette. <laughs> Last but not least, because she is the matriarch of the group, she is the senior member of this panel. And we will tell you her birth date was uh, February 21st, 1911. Her name is Muriel McMahon. She was born uh, her, at her, actually, were you born at home, Muriel? Yes. Okay, she was born at home also. At the, oh, you were too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, she was born at the old, she was born Muriel Jessup, <laughs> <laughs> she really was, and she was born at the Jessup 
homestead, which is in the photograph, in a photograph, you know, back here, we can see it later, and it was next to where uh, Brockett Funeral Home is today, okay? She attended local schools and married and raised three children, and then later on uh, went to work at the style shop, where those of us who grew up in my generation remembered her uh, working. She lived, I think she worked there for 20, was it 19, 19 years? And so she was one of the ladies who waited on us when we went to get our stockings and <laughs> things like that. Uh, she's the mother of three, the grandmother of 18, and the great grandmother of 12. So please welcome yes. Muriel Okay, just so that we get to know our guests just a little tiny bit better, I'd like to sort of go down the line and ask each of our uh, panelists just to talk for a moment or two about their families and when they came to Southampton and where they settled. Can we start with you, Constance? Well, um, <clears throat> actually, my own family, or you're talking about the Harris too. Well, you can talk about both. <laughs> <laughs> They were, came quite a few years ago, and uh, I've always lived in Southampton, and uh, lived on Hill Street to begin with, and then after we married, we lived on Honey Street, and then we moved and lived in the old homestead, um, which is um, which was built in 1750. And now this will be a Herrick house, yeah, is that correct? And uh, it's belonged to the Herrick family since 1835. Um, and uh, that's now, the Herricks, were they there before the Edwards? The Edwards, my Edwards relatives originally went to East Hampton. Okay. And then my grandfather um, moved to Southampton. He had a big uh, produce business uh, in, in, um, with a gentleman named Frank White. And uh, where was that located? on Hill Street. Okay. That's interesting. Uh, Roxanne, how about you? When did your ancestors move to Southampton? Uh, my parents uh, moved to Southampton and 75 years ago, uh, 1927. And uh, we lived uh, above where Savannah's is right now, Joe's. We lived there for a while, and eventually my dad got a job on the farm on North Main Street, uh, which was Newberry's farm, and I grew up there as a child, went to school from that uh, area, uh, until I got in high school, and then we moved, we built and moved on Hillcrest Avenue, and I am still uh, located next door to where I lived. I built next door to where I live. And, Does someone uh, in your family still own the family home next yes, door? Yes, Rich Wingfield owns that. <laughs> oh, okay. My nephew he owns that, and the other parcel of land was given to me. So I built there. So that's where uh, I've been all, all the while uh, throughout high school until the present time. Right. I have three children. Here and the school here. Off one uh, daughter's in Orlando, Florida. And uh, my oldest, my son is in Atlanta, Georgia. And my youngest daughter is in Chesapeake, Virginia, which I plan to go to see her on Monday. Okay. She's expecting her second child. Uh, so, uh, well, it's nice to have all of you folks holding down the court. I mean, if the average American moves every seven years, we're happy that you are not the average. <laughs> okay, Florette, how about you and your well, my, my parents were French immigrants, and my mother came here in 1896, and my dad came in the early 1900s. And um, they came to Southampton probably in 1908, and built the house, started to build the house where I'm still living in 1912. I think that house is on one of the panels back there. Yes, is it, it is. Okay. Yes. And 
why did your your father did he come over to be he he was a horticulturist? he was a very well educated <coughs> horticulturist he studied in Germany and France and England and spent three years in Indochina in the botanical garden mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then when you moved when he moved to Southampton did he not work for many he, he people? Worked on the on two very large estates. He was at the head of two large estates here. So. Were there many people who were as skilled in horticulture as your father? No. Not many at that time. Yeah. Okay. Mrs. McMahon, how about your family? <coughs> My family, the Joseph family moved here about sixteen forty, I think. They were one of the first settlers here. And they've lived here ever since. And, uh, I was born on Hampton Road and the old homestead, which has been torn down ever since. So, and then I went to school here. And, uh, now you went to the school, which was at that time, the, what is now the town hall, is that right, correct? Right. Now, that. did you go K through 12 in that school? Or did they have kindergarten when you went to school? You, yes, they had kindergarten. They had kindergarten. So was that one school? Yes, the same school I went through from kindergarten right until I graduated. Okay. Now, someone mentioned, I think it was Richard Barron's, I'm not sure, that the other school on Pine Street might have been built uh, during the WPA. Um, it could have been, I just I don't remember. Okay, all right. All right, let me just ask you as a group or whoever would like to answer are I'm interested to know since we're talking about the depression years um, do, do any of you have a memory of when the stock market crashed or you know the newspapers having news that was not so good about finances you know and so forth were there any strong memories of that happening I, I, oh, well I don't remember having read anything or anything being told but when I was a little girl and growing up, uh, my mother, my mother, father would go into New York, drive in, well maybe a couple of times a month, and we would go to stay in a hotel, we would go out to restaurants to eat, we'd go to shows, and then all of a sudden we didn't do that. We just stopped like that. So it's so that was uh, I, I, can, I can remember I can't remember the day that happened or the hour it happened or anything, mm -hmm. but. They were all so young. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Mrs. McMahon? I remember when the stock market crashed, but it didn't seem to affect us at all because we didn't have any stock then. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember uh, we, I was married in 35, and we would get together and uh, have parties, but they were all cooperative. We would meet at each other's house. Depression dinners. Depression dinners, that's <laughs> right. But we had good times. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, do you, do any of you remember the headlines, or did it seem sort of like a distant, a somewhat distant thing? Distant. The stock market crashed. We knew it had happened. You knew it had happened. It was distant to us. Right. Um, I suppose that so many people here were quite self-sufficient in some ways, in terms of growing food. And all that. Roxanne, you yes. were. Yes, we had, uh, we lived on the farm, of course. So uh, we had hogs, which my uh, dad would, you know, slaughter them in the winter, like around December, just before Christmas time. And we'd have uh, that. We had, earlier, we had a cow, a couple cows. And my mother and father, they raised their vegetable garden. Uh, everything, most anything that you could name, they had. And uh, of course the children had to help take care of the garden. And we had fresh vegetables all uh, you know, the summer season. And then for the winter months, my mom would can. She'd can a, a lot of stuff, a lot of different things. And we had, we raised chickens and uh, you see the chicken running around, and the next hour you see him in the pot. 
mother would ring that my dad would take the, the, the uh, axe and chop the neck, but my mom would just ring the neck. And I thought it was so cruel. She said, shut up, girl, you got to eat. <laughs> so uh, we, we had, uh, we had uh, a bit of food, uh, and those means were wonderful to us because we didn't have to go to the market to buy all the veggies, and, and uh, we didn't have to go to get that much you know, we, we had the chickens and the hogs, which the meat was cured, and we had the bacon and everything, the sausages for, for breakfast, and uh, the space of maybe three months or so for the sausages and stuff like that. But uh, So you cured your own there. meat, did you? Yes. Did you yes. I had a, my dad had a smoke house. He smoked the meat and cured the ham and whatever. How about you? Did you have a garden? Well, yes, apropos of that, I must have been just about that the age that it was part of the Depression, but my <coughs> father and grandfather decided that we should learn uh, how to manage money. <laughs> and so in my grandfather's big truck garden, it was a huge garden, they planted strawberries for us. And uh, we were to take, <coughs> we were to harvest them and put them in and sell them. And, and we were supposed to keep a ledger of what we paid out for the boxes and everything. We were supposed to do everything but the actual planning of the strawberry. So the first year, all my mother's friends said, well, we'll buy a quart of strawberries from Constance. We really should do that. <laughs> so they did. And, How much uh, did you sell them for? Oh, 25, I think 25 cents a quarter. And uh, the second year, they had to call days ahead of time to get their order filled because they were, we were so, you know, we did such beautiful strawberries and did such a good job. The third year, we went wholesale. <laughs> and that was the end of it. But um, we had to keep a little ledger and we had to keep what we paid out for anything and what we took in. So. Yeah. Where did you sell your strawberries? Where did we sell them? Okay. On Hill Street? I mean, oh, was, it a, oh, yeah. was it a stand? Uh, we had a little, I had, we had a little red wagon, and, and it was just beneath my dignity to pull mm -hmm. that red wagon, so I made my sister do it. <laughs> <laughs> I would pick extra baskets of strawberries, but I did not want to be caught. We lived on Hill Street. <laughs> All right, I know you had gardens. <laughs> we had very much the same thing as Mrs. Dozier. We had our chickens and, and uh, vegetables and all the fruits, all the fruits, raspberries. And flowers at home as well? Well, Mother always had flowers, mm -hmm. always had to have her flowers. And my dad, previous to that, he died in 1927, but previous to that, he raised 60,000 gladiolas. <laughs> And what did he do? He who, who sold them wholesale. He sold them to Frank and Bag. I'd like to add to that. My mom also loved flowers. And where my little house is right now, that whole area was practically flowers, especially in the front. Mm -hmm. And she had beautiful glass. And people would just ride by to look at the flowers. She didn't have enough to sell or, or anything like that. But um, she makes different types of kinds of flowers. It was just a beautiful garden. Oh, that's, that's How about you? We had, a, my husband had a beautiful garden, flowers and vegetables, and not a weed in it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is one thing about having a big family. You can get all the kids to do some work outside, right? <laughs> Apropos of that kind of thing, I wanted to ask you what, what kinds of chores, well, actually, first of all, let's ask about your homes. What did you have in your homes? I mean, did you have radios? Did you have, did you, what kind of heat? Did you heat with coal or? Yeah, I think we heat, yeah, we heat with coal. How about you? Coal, wood and coal. Wood and coal. Yes, yeah. the kitchen, you know, for the cooking also. And then the winter, we had uh, the dining room, we had a little pot belly heater mm -hmm. to help with the rest of the house. What about up in your bed, you know, if, if you had bedrooms, did yeah, they have bedrooms. any heat? That's the only heat. Those two things we would let the door that was it. And it'd go up. The heat would go upstairs. Surprisingly, upstairs was really warm okay. down there on North Main where I was. But I slept downstairs, downstairs bedroom, and that was freezing. <laughs> I'd have to take a hot a bottle, <laughs> heat the water. We didn't have the hot water. 
bottles as we do today. We just took an old pint of the bottle and put it with hot water and put it between a, a towel and put it in the bed and kept moving it around. <laughs> I was cold. Those windows were so cold. The ice stayed on my bedroom window for maybe two weeks at a time without it melting. Jack Frost was right there. We had what they used to call an old soapstone that you needed. Right. And then put it in the bed. And then put it in the bed. So I guess you had to dress accordingly. Yes. <laughs> yes. Did you, did your families make make your clothes? Did you make your own clothes or did your mother sew for you? My mother made all my clothes. Did you all learn to sew? <laughs> make a novice in school. You must have. Before I was married. Okay. Sewing. How about you, Mrs. McMahon? I made all my children's clothes. Shows made beautiful outfits. Did you buy your uh, fabric at at Hildreth's? Yes, they used to have a big selection and much bigger than they have now. We buy Romans to make the children coats and leggings. Mm -hmm. Did you? Okay, back to the radios. Did you have radio? I know you didn't have telephones, but did you have radios? Yes. Yes. Did you listen to them? Yes. Yes. Did you have one radio in a central place in your house? Or? My father built a battery operated set. Of course, you had to listen with the. <laughs> we had a central radio in the dining room. Oh, you did? Yes. Just the one, the big one that stood up. Now, were there programs on all day, all night? I mean, <coughs> what was, how many channels could you get? <laughs> or stations? <laughs> WJZ. Okay. WJZ. Okay. 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 Were they New York City stations? Mm -hmm. I think so. The Shadow. The Shadow. Oh, yeah. Yes. 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 And there was some newscaster that my father would always have me you know, listen to this man speak because he speaks so beautifully and his diction was just perfect. Mm -hmm. He said, just listen. I can't think who it was. Did they have <coughs> news on the radio? Yes. Mm -hmm. And what about music? Yes, what kind of music did you all listen to when you were I yeah. don't remember music being on. Not on the radio as much? No, just uh, the news and different stories and things like that. And that uh, I don't remember any music you know, like you know, today. Like that today? Now, the programs that you listen to, The Shadow and Anna Sandy, were they on every night or once a week? Or? Yeah, I don't think either. Okay. Yeah, you did? Because my father was a bird, was a violinist, and he and Mr. Dunwell and several other older men had a group, and they played for the first benefit for the hospital. Oh, did pay for really? To raise money to, to build the hospital? Okay. For the leisure, we had we had these. I had a sister who played played the piano. That's another thing. We had, we had piano. You had a piano. And a sister. Someone asked me about my sister Louise. <laughs> Louise played the piano from about seven years old, and she's played for the church all these years up until straight through today. She's still playing. Oh, is she really? Yes. And uh, we love to sing. And we would sing in the church, so we'd come home and we'd have our own little choir at home. And we enjoyed it. Oh, isn't that very much? We took a piano lesson with my sister and I. I never went on to become a pen piano concert. <laughs> but, you, but you enjoyed it when you played for pleasure. I think I enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> Who taught piano in those days? Hazel Brand. Hazel Brand. Hazel, Hazel Brown. 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 Oh, that was Peter sure. Robinson's grandmother. That's right. That's right. Okay. Well, She'd take your big friendship. 
My sister didn't learn by. Oh, sorry. My sister didn't uh, play by. She didn't take a note, but she plays. She plays beautiful. She can just hear something one time. She's got a great ear. Yeah, she has an ear, and she can pick it up. And that's that's the way she's been all of her life. My husband played piano. He doesn't play the piano. He sang. We always had music in the house when we were growing up. We had music too. We had a piano, but it was a player piano. We pumped it with feet. And my father would play the piano, pump with his feet. And my sister and myself would sing along with Dad. Oh, that's great. So you amused yourselves? Yes. Were there games that you played, cards or other games that you played at home? The cheesy. Checkers. We used to play, um, we used to have a big area, grass area next door to our house, and we used to play games there at night, I mean, can and, and, excuse me, and statues, you know, where you'd be swinging around yeah. and, 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 and then we built villages in the, in the edges of the driveways and built little houses, and really, you know, there were no, uh, what kind of chores did you all do? Did you help with cleaning or cooking? Yes. Did the dishes. I did. Did the dishes. How about I cooking? Did the dishes, but I, I helped with cooking. You helped I was cooking. old enough. Yes. I I even but my brother saw wood. Mm -hmm. So you, you saw the wood I, for your stoves? For a stove, yeah. I, I, I never chopped with the axe. I can, could never manage the axe. But he said, I, I did. Out, of, <laughs> <laughs> out of the six girls, I was the best. I was the one that had a steady arm to help them pull the saw. <laughs> so I was stuck sawing the wood. But, and uh, we'd have to carry it in and take turns. We have our chores, two of us. Two of us Two weeks, the next two, and two weeks, the next two, and on down the line. That's where it that was one big draw. Did you feel that you spent quite a bit of time helping out in various ways at home, all of you? I did. Yeah, we all had our share cleaning the house. Right. On, on Saturdays, we all had our turns and washing dishes. You know, one week at a time, two of us would walk through the dishes. And, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about who did the cooking? First of all, did any of your mothers work outside of the home? I know it was a lot of work to keep a household going. Mm -hmm. no. <clears throat> my mother didn't. My mother didn't work until, until the last child got, you know, maybe up to about you know, fourth or fifth grade, right. and then she went out to work. Although she did work at the potato field. Mm -hmm. Uh, potatoes, you know, season for potatoes. Mm -hmm. uh, she picked potatoes, and that was a tough job. Mm -hmm. I, I only had, to, only went out there, let's see, four days, and I almost died. I, you have to crawl on your knees, and you know, all day long. That was not easy at all. And uh, I didn't like outdoors. Period. I didn't like the sun. So I begged my mom to give me any job in the house. I love laundry. Right. Did the laundry. Far away from the fields. Yes. Did you eat a lot of potatoes and potatoes? Yes, we did. We eat all year round, you know, because we had to, you can always keep potatoes all the right. winter months. How about the, uh, the sort of the discipline in the household? Was, was that, you know, whose job was that? Was it both parents or was, it, was the father a sort of a disciplinarian more than the mother or no. No. They were both equal to be taken seriously. Mm -hmm. Um so we've already established that you, you didn't run out of food, any of you, you had plenty to eat. How about clothes? I mean, did you have very many clothes? Did you have several things that you wore for many years, you know, hand me downs? What kind of clothes did you have? Well we had to buy our clothes because no one in my family sewed, mm -hmm. uh, so we had to buy our clothes. And we had aunts who were, you know, a couple aunts who worked out with, you know, just uh, themselves with no family, so to speak. And they would help my mother out a great deal. And uh, buying, a, you know, a dress here, mm -hmm. a jacket, a blouse, or what have you. But what we had, we kept it clean. 
That's one thing my mother taught. Always keep it clean. Mm -hmm. So you're, if we had two pairs of socks, we know we'd have to wash that pair of socks. We took it them. all. Yes. Did you did you wear hand me downs the rest of yes. you? Did you? Now for right, you didn't because uh, there was no one to hand me down to. I didn't because I had three brothers. <laughs> 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 Okay, where did you shop? What, okay, let's just talk for a couple minutes about the village and what it was like. Um, the roads were paved, but they hadn't been paved for a very long time, right? How about cars? Did you did you all have cars? Oh, yes. yes. You all had cars? Yes. Um, so what were the, some of the stores on Main Street at that time, say in the late 20s and 30s? Ralston store. Where was Ralston's? Is that on Job's Lane down? No, no, no it was on Main Street. Street. Oh, on Main Street. 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 It was where, um, that where the where hospital strip shop is now, isn't it? Where, no. Did it become Dad's and Lads then? After Ral Ralston? I thought Ralston. Was it? Well, wasn't it? Wasn't it right next to the Bill Martin store on Job's Lane? Oh, no, Bill was on Job's Lane. Okay. What did Ralston sell? Groceries. 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 It was a grocery store. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the, the, the five and dimes. The five and dimes. Mm -hmm. Was it Schulman's? I mean, that was before Schulman's, well, I guess, right? Five and dimes. It was Corwitz. Okay, yeah, let's do this. Corwitz was on the corner. Right. right. Then it was the ten, five and ten cent store. Schulman's. Schulman's. That was Shulman's. Well, before Shulman's. Yeah, before Shulman's. Okay. Okay. Yeah, right. I think it was handy. And then there was the style shop. Yep. And there was a Holden stationery store. Mm -hmm. then I did. And then it was a real estate place, I think, next next to, wasn't it? Next to Howard. Was that Walsy Howard? Yes. Real estate. And then, yes. the, then the village hall. The village hall. Yeah. The bank. I kind of lose track the of the bank. Yeah, the, the bank. The bank is there. And I'm not sure about some of those little houses till we came to Herrick's, and Herrick's was there, and Hildreth's, and Morris's was across the street. Then was Herbert's on the corner of the Wall Street. And there was a shoe store next to to Herrick's. The uh, Peters, Mr. Glass. Eric and Hildegard's here were across the street. Yes. Yeah. And then there was uh, Schwank's Meat Market, where that real mm -hmm. uh, big ice cream, trattoria, whatever it is, is there on the corner of Wall Street. And Morris's studio was there, wasn't it? Was it that far? I remember Morris's yes. studio. Morris's studio hasn't changed. That's right. Well. Well. <laughs> 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 um, how about uh, Elizabeth Arden, or oh, was, yes. was that later? I worked there a couple summers. You did? It's where the music. Right, where, where Sam goes. Sam goes. And what was next to Elizabeth Arnold? Sachs. 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 But before Sachs, it was Best and Company. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, was Job's Lane full of stores that were closed or local year round stores? At first, there were some local, local. There was a grocery store, White and Jennings. White and Jennings, where the shoe store is. Yes. Right. And then there was Janakio's to the yes. to the east of that. Yeah. Then there was the meat market, Agawa Meat Market, across the street where Ralph Lauren now is. <laughs> that was McGurns. That was McGurns. Yeah, McGurns. Did I? What did I say? Agawa. <laughs> McGurns. And then. <laughs> Tinakis was um, east on the other east side of okay. east of Jennings. What about the Agawam garage? Was that before any of you remember? No, I remember I that. Remember. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Yes. And my mother and father, I remember them taking me to a dance that they went to up there. At Agawam Hall? Yes, it was upstairs. I mean, they had vaudeville acts up there, didn't they? I, I understand that they had some vaudeville acts. <coughs> Come out there. I don't remember that. I just remember going over there. I think they did, you and know, on, back, back. On the way. corner of uh, Window Lane and Hill Street on the west corner, 
there was uh, the old Garden Theater. Oh, right. That was the first movie theater. Right. Mm -hmm. No, there was a theater on Main Street. There was a theater there, on Main Street where the, the, the Masonic yeah, building that, is, right? Was I there? remember going there. It was upstairs, right? Upstairs, upstairs. Taking my sister, but she didn't like it. She cried, I'd have to take the leave. <laughs> <laughs> Why did she cry? <laughs> She was little, she was about five or six, I was about seven. I never had to worry about people bothering you, men bothering right. you. We didn't yeah. have to be afraid. We never locked the doors. And it was it was a wonderful place to live, I think. Was it um, affordable to go to the movies? I mean, was that a treat or was that something you could just do, afford to do, most people? Just do. I think it couldn't have cost maybe it was 10 cents. I have right. no idea. Right. But, uh, uh, my family, we couldn't afford it. Right. Okay. It was a treat. It was I mean, a treat. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think it was a treat, too. Money seemed to have a little more. Yeah. I mean, it was important. Right. Mm -hmm. You didn't just throw it away. You just thought money. about how you spent it. Mm -hmm. What about the, you know, the people who came in the summer, the summer people? What kind of relationship did you all have with those people? None. No. <laughs> <laughs> just kids. Was there a good feeling? Was there a resentment? Was there no, no not resentment. No, they lived their life and we lived ours. Did their arriving in the summer help any of you all out, you know, economically at all? Did my family. It did your family. Oh, it did your family, didn't it? Now for it because your dad died, um, my mother carried on. You your family probably had you know, more than a share of hard times. What what happened when your dad died? Well, my mother had sold flowers <coughs> the summer before, so just cut flowers. So she kept right on growing her flowers and selling her flowers to these summer people. Mm -hmm. How and did she, did they, they came, they they came to right the house? To house. Mm -hmm. But then during the Depression, my brother couldn't find any word. And that, that was really hard on us, very hard. What did you do? I mean, how did you he'd go? Manage? He'd go clamming or mm -hmm. oystering or things like that. And of course, we still had our vegetables and our chickens. Mm -hmm. So we, we lived, you know, but just Not from without. day to day. Yeah. Dad, did that also, my parents fished a lot. Since your family was in business and the Herricks, you know, were in business, were those local businesses very affected, you think, during the Depression years? Well, or my, well my father was an insurance agent, a very successful, very I mean, he did a very good business, but when the Depression hit, that was probably one of the first things that people had to had to give up, and it really affected it affected us <clears throat> in that sense. Mm -hmm. But before then, we right. just there was money. You just didn't think twice. Right. That's when we went into New York. <laughs> right. right. Um, I would imagine the local business people were probably hurt uh, more than people who didn't depend on, you know, uh, uh, local patrons, I suppose. I mean, were restaurants uh, hard hit during the Depression years? There were a number of little places to go. There weren't. I don't even remember it. <laughs> but what about the places, there was a restaurant where Bohax later came, where the IGA is now. Right? There was a, Oh, that was Hampton. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh that, was that, that was so. That was such a beautiful spot. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. That was so a hotel, hotel and restaurant. Yeah. Well, I don't know what there was. It was a hotel. It was a hotel. It was a hotel. But there was a, it was a sweep of ground, as I remember. It went. Oh, that was so mm -hmm. sad. Now, who stayed there? I <laughs> sort of summer visitors, or <laughs> was it open all year round? That a tap room down in the cellar <coughs> where people would go and get us stopping for a beer. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was always, seemed to me, that was always busy. 
Um, what about schools? We know where you went to school, but did schools, did you have a lot of homework? No, no. No. And who were some of the teachers that you remember? I think we were talking about Ms. Schrader. Yes. Oh, Why don't we wonderful. talk a little bit about her? Because she was an exception. Ms. Schrader was also in, the, in the high school. I went to the, in the Lane about, School. But, mm -hmm which went up to the sixth grade, and then you graduated over to the, what is now Town Hall. Hall. Yeah. But, um, and my sister and I <coughs> would ride our bicycles down to the, we just had to ride down Hill Street, turn left, and go down to the, to the school, parked our <coughs> bicycles in the barn, of, and it had a big barn, the farmer next door. Climbed over the fence and went to school. Um, but before that, my m mother would take me across the street, and, uh, on Hill Street, she would take me across the street, and then she just would heave a sigh of relief because she knew that all I had to do was walk down Hill Street, turn left on Windmill Lane, and get up to the school. Until the morning that my father had to be coming along the other way and saw me, and every morning, obviously, I was helping <coughs> some kid walk across the street. Oh. I would go up right the street and something bring <laughs> Which That was the end of your being on you the way to I guess school. so. Um, now, Miss Schrader was a Latin teacher, right? Yes, and yes. English. And English. And English. And English. I went to English. She was tall? Yes, she was. Was she Was she 17? Six, eight, 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 really amusing class. We had a couple of uh, seven feet, uh, boys that would really just try her every day, so to speak. Yeah, she was told and she could get angry. She could. Mm -hmm. She would say, sit down, she'd call on you. She'd call your name to get up and to recite something. If you didn't pop up, sit down! <laughs> well, you could stand up. Stand up, and I recall staying with her. I could not do conjugation. <laughs> oh, uh, but she was a good oh, teacher. Very good yeah. teacher. And I stayed it was a cold winter winter day like it has been the past week or so. <laughs> oh, I walked from school to North Maine and I felt as though I had no fingers, no toes, no face, no nothing that day because I missed the bus. I didn't miss the bus very often, but that was one night I had to stay. I couldn't couldn't get around that. But uh, I liked it. She was she was good. She was, she was nice, very nice to me. I liked her very much. But, uh, we had so much fun in that class, I tell you. We didn't have a bus until many, many years later. So you I walked from North Sea? She went to school in North Sea. I had a mile down. You didn't need physical education class. <laughs> <laughs> I walked a year or so when I first went to Hillcrest. Uh, have a high school bus, but eventually they got a bus, and I was happy about that. That still was a long walk. Now, Muriel, you didn't have to walk very far at all, no, did you? It was very easy for me. <laughs> I guess I walked, I walked until, and then once in a while my father would take take me to school, but um, mostly we walked and walked home at the school. Did you? Um, Socialize with your friends after school, or did you go home and be with your families? What was your, you know, what were your social lives like on the after school or on weekends? <laughs> There's well, always something to do. I think that the, we had a lot of uh, friends around the neighborhood, and it was uh, fun, a lot of fun. Yeah, we we really had neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. A nice well, neighborhood. Where I live. There were there were no houses around or anyone else around. But Helen White was my closest friend, and we were in the same class together, so we did have fun. Did you walk to school? Well, actually, we walked to school. I think you told me that. Um, we had fun also, but we had so many chores to do. Yeah. <laughs> with a big family, and we didn't have much time to um, even go out to do much of anything. But you say Helen White lived across the street from me, just down a little bit. And we'd all have fun uh, in the winter months uh, in the potato lots there. 
the, the, the lot would be, you don't have a, like a big hole, sink it, sink mm -hmm. it, sink hole there, and when the water came, the rain, or snow, it froze over to a nice skating pond, and we had fun. All the, all the farm children that lived on the farms, and all the, Ellen White and her family, Albert Halsey's family, and uh, Ed Diamond's family, and the Newberry family, children on that farm, we all got together in the lots on the ice with our sleds and the ice skates and what have you, and the moonlight, usually a lot of moonlight nights then, and uh, we just had a great time. We all, you know, we're all were pals, we all were friends, and those who did not have the skates or couldn't afford the sleigh or the skates, you know, uh, they just, you know, loan them, loan them. Yeah. Things to us. They take turns. Right, mm -hmm. turns. We had a big group in the whole Street Street and Hill Street. But, um, we don't play. And, and the Holdens had a tennis court, which was very nice. And, and uh, Mr. Holden taught us how to play tennis. And we could play tennis as long as we swept the tapes and rolled and took care of it after we were finished. So uh, <coughs> we. We all, we you kept really active. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Um, was Sunday a family day? Was was Sunday a church day? Sunday was a big dinner in the middle of the day. Yes. Day. And waiting an hour after before you could go to swimming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the longest hour. <laughs> well, I know the winters were colder, right? There was more snow? Yes. Were they? The winters, yes. I, mean, the winters. I can't remember. How about the summers? What did you do? Did you have jobs in the summer? You know, when you got to be a teenager? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. You were working. Anyway. With the flowers. How about you? Yeah. I worked in Hildreth when I was 16, but I didn't do anything before that. Okay. <laughs> now, when you worked in Hildreth, were they selling some food in Hildreth oh, yes. at that time? Mm -hmm. Yes, they had a grocery store. They did? Also had a shoe store. They had a shoe store? Mm -hmm. Where they had uh, the, the last small store on the right. 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 Then it became Sorry. a men's clothing yeah. store, didn't it? Yeah. After that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, they had a big, uh, and they did a big business with the food store of Hilda's. Because I had to write out the bills <laughs> by hand. <laughs> and some of the summer houses would have a, a kitchen bill, a pantry bill, a dining bill. I mean, and we had a double column, and I had to write them all out by hand. One head of lettuce, one head of Right. Right. Sometimes we didn't get those bills out to the middle of the month, but... <laughs> the, the people who visited in the summer, back the, in the 20s, did they have large staffs? Oh, yes. Well, I think so. Yes. One, of the, one of the estates that my father worked on, they had 23 cents. Oh, my goodness. And whose house would that have been? That was Wyckoff, so I'm not kind of Wyckoff. Um, did you, I know you sold flowers and people would come to your gardens. Did your parents or your father do arrangements for people and bring them to the home? Mother homes? never did, did. She just cut, did, sold cut flowers. Okay. Right, I want you to tell about the names of the gardens there at your house. Oh. <laughs> My, both my mother and father had separate gardens, and they each had their little sign. And my mother's sign was Mon Jardin, which means my garden. And my dad's uh, sign said Son Jardin, which means his garden. <laughs> and when my dad died, my mother dedicated the, to the place to my dad, and so of course it is now, still is Son Jardin. <laughs> Now, Laura, you spent a lot of time with your dad when you were young, right? When you, before he died, a lot of time with your father. Yes, I did. Because you, unlike the others, really didn't live in the neighborhood. So, well, there was 11 years difference between my 
closest brother mm -hmm. and myself, so I was with my dad a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think you told me he taught you a lot about what he did. I learned all the botanical names before I ever knew the common names. <laughs> <laughs> Was there ever any doubt in your mind that you wanted to work with flowers? There was never any doubt, but unfortunately, um, life makes demands on you that you don't expect. <laughs> yeah. But I finally achieved what I wanted. Yeah, that's wonderful. That's great. Um, we talked a little bit about, you know, that there weren't many restaurants. Did families? So go out for meals or take vacations when you were young, or was that was that an unusual thing for it's families to go away on a vacation? I, we didn't go out for meals. Right. Right. <laughs> so hey, nobody children. did that too much. Well, as I say, we, we used to go to New York bigger. Right. We, but we went. Uh, I say we went to Virginia every summer, the second week in August every summer, not every one of us, because we couldn't all fit in one car. <laughs> so uh, of course. So uh, we'd leave, uh, part of uh, the family would stay with an aunt or a relative around town. And uh, my dad would take half of us one year and half the next oh, year. Great. And we went to Virginia for a week. Did you look forward to that trip? No, it was too hot. Mosquitoes <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the flies <laughs> and the clothes. I think, I think the biggest jaunt I remember was driving to Montauk before there was ever a real road to Montauk. And they had... Um, the hill? Oh, the hills, <laughs> yes, but also they had parking, little park places where you could pull over to let the other car come <laughs> the other way go by. <laughs> we used to go down there to pick uh, cranberries. They had cranberry bogs down there. That was good. We used to go down there. This was sometimes on a Sunday when there wasn't anything else going on, and, and just go up and down those, those hills. <laughs> Easily amused. Well, it must have taken a while to drive to Montauk. Of course, it does now, too. <laughs> but it must have taken a while to, uh, to get around, right? I mean, to New York, it probably took. Oh gosh, that was the longest drive. <laughs> we, we would get so restless. And I remember my mother and father saying, well, look for some birds in a tree. Did you see that blue bird? <laughs> 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 and I would kind of look at each other like, okay. <laughs> it was bad as taking a T Model 4 to Virginia. Because <laughs> 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 the father that couldn't drive that one. <laughs> Did it take you just one day to get there, Roxanne, or did yeah, it take a couple a, of days? Just, just maybe just one day. You yeah. know, we, we wouldn't stop over motel or anything, right. but we'd just uh, right. stop for food and uh, get in. And right. Did you spend time in Sag Harbor or what, you know, Bridge Hampton? Did you run game, athletic games between those schools, or did you pretty much stick to your town, Southampton? We could go over to Sag Harbor once in a while because they had, um, in that park, they had slides and they didn't mm -hmm. some like that in our thing. We used to play <coughs> Sag Harbor in East Hampton in soccer and basketball. Mm -hmm. Not too many other places, just right. those two. Now, when you all were in high school, was there a general feeling, is there any way to generalize about how people felt about this town? I mean, did they want to leave Southampton? Or did they just assume they would stay here after they graduated? What was was there anything you could generalize about? I don't think that too many of the uh, people I knew around me that they couldn't afford to stay here like it is right today. They finished high school and they were out of here. Mm -hmm. They've gone because the economy is so that they couldn't afford to right. stay here and build a house or anything and raise a you know family. Mm -hmm. So they just just leave yeah. elsewhere. How about the young people to live here now, too? Well, it's yes. very yeah, hard for us. They yes. can't afford the rent. It's very hard. And now most people have, you know, two parent working family. you know, yes. two, two people are working in the families. Although, if we lived in the same lifestyle that you all did, 
no doubt we could have more one <laughs> one person working families, you know, probably. Now we're talking about the days before antibiotics, right? So was there you know, were there was there a fear about, you know, getting diseases? Did people die of infections or flus or you know, before they well certainly polio was a scare. And the flu epidemic in that was I think in nineteen seventeen was it? The five of us were all down the floor at the same time. And we had one room in the house with five beds and uh -huh. and the mother and father took care of us. I had I had scarlet fever when I was nine years old. <coughs> I came home from school and I told my mother I had a sore throat and she said, Well, just get to bed and stay in bed. And the next morning I came down and I said, I still have this sore throat. And said, it feels terrible. She said, well, all right, get into my bed and I'll call Dr. Skang. Because those days, the doctors made hospitals. Mm -hmm. And the Dr. Skang came up and he took one look and he said, well, she's got scarlet fever. And I remember I turned and said to my mother, I told her so. <laughs> no, 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 no. Anyway, we were quarantined. Nobody could come into the house. Nobody could leave. And um, uh, uh, after two weeks, my father came down with it. And so he had to move over and stay. My mother had to take care of both of us. In the middle of all of this, the ceiling fell down in the living room. Uh -huh. no. And nobody could come in. Oh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> because you were all quarantined. <laughs> yes, because we were quarantined. But um, we all managed to get through it. But uh, my sister, Nobody else in the family got, and nobody that I know of in the school. It evidently, was not terribly contagious it because wasn't. nobody. My brother had. My brother, had. My brother, my brother had. Albert had. So, he was quarantined for a long time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We were, but none of the rest of us got it. Yeah. Yeah. It was just at uh, at uh, the end of the school year, and uh, we were all quarantined. You were. Yeah, we couldn't take exams. My father died because penicillin hadn't been discovered. He had pneumonia. And that was it. Yeah. So I suppose that there must have been some degree of, you know, thanks at getting through illnesses or, you know, surviving or having kids, you know, make it through childhood. Um, when you look back on life so far, uh, what sorts of feelings do you have about having grown up in this town? Can you all make a comment there? How about you? Mary? I loved it. I thought it was a wonderful town to, to grow up in. I had a wonderful childhood, wonderful parents, and we had that great big place where we could play and do everything, climb trees. and. Mm -hmm. Do most anything. It was a lot of it was a big piece of property. I love Southampton. I don't think I ever want to leave. Well, we hope you don't. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Corette? And I love it too. And I, I have been very happy. And I, I liked it when I was growing up. But past ten years, no, I wish no, I could no, get out no. of here. <laughs> <laughs> it's changed I, so much. I, I, I changed don't so like much. it as much as I was when growing yeah. up. Of course. I say we were a happy family, we had a large family, right. but we were very happy. Yes. And we and looked, not we only looked that, after everybody. When you went into town, you knew almost everybody. Everybody. Yes. And everybody yes. said hello to you. Right. Yes, they did. Mm -hmm. How about you, Mrs. Hart? Um, oh, it's, it's just changed, so. But, but you have great memories of Oh, it. yes. Good. Um, okay, I think we'll end this portion. And thank you all, and then we'll take some questions. But before we do, I'd like to say thank you very much to the board.